Hey everybody, Rockstar Tragedy here, and welcome to a special Q&A video, and uh, I wanted to get this out yesterday, but I could not because the recording absolutely failed. The camera was recording at a really low frame rate, so everything just came out really awful, and I apologize for not getting that out, but today I'm going to read the questions that you guys have been sending all throughout the day yesterday, and I, I think I even got a few overnight, so let's just head into this. And just to let you know, these questions aren't going to be answered in any particular order. It's not, I'm not answering them in the order that they're received or anything. Uh, some people have submitted more than one question, so I do want to kind of spread that field out a little bit, so the order is going to be a little bit off. If you guys want this type of video to happen somewhere down the line, and we get more people involved, then I might start imposing like a one question per person limit, but for now, the number of questions I got was sufficient. Some people sent in multiple, like two, three, or four, so it, it filled the quota for now, and I'm totally fine with that, but I do want to be fair to those in the future. If we get a lot more people interested in this type of video, uh, I'd like to get them on too. So let's let's get going. Sammy LaBelle asks, what equipment and programs do you use to record and edit your videos? And uh, I've always used Sony Vegas to do the editing. To record my videos, I use my webcam software. So I have a Logitech C920 full HD webcam, and it comes with its own webcam software. So I use that to record my camera. When I stream, I'm still using the software, but it's kind of like OBS has its own like hook for it, so it just pulls up the, the same software. That's, that's all I use. It's pretty clear cut and simple. For my audio, uh, sometimes I'll use Audacity to record a separate track, but usually now I've gotten kind of used to just putting it all through OBS, so um, that has seemed to work out for me. It doesn't work out for everybody. Everybody has different preferences, but um, this is the easy way for me. My good friend Mandy asks, if I could have anything for Christmas, what would I want? And man, I've always debated this for years, for years. But uh, really just spending time with friends and family. I know that's like a super cliche, like come on Tom kind of answer, but it's the truth. Like these monetary things, these material things, they're great, but there's no better value and spending that time with friends and family. That's what I cherish. I actually can't wait to come see you guys. Uh, that's happening soon. And also, today is Mandy's birthday, so anybody watching this video should definitely send her a tweet saying happy birthday. Don't have to say it's from me, just do it because it's the right thing to do. Michelle asks, later in life, once you've hit your fitness goals, will you become an extreme ironer? Now I've taken the time to look up this link, okay? And first, yes. That is my new goal in life. I want to go all around the world to the biggest mountains, to the lowest valleys, and uh, I, I want to make this a thing. It's so it's so awesome, right? Just, you know, I, I could do it at home, but why do it at home when I can go to freaking, you know, Grand Canyon and, and start ironing some clothes? Because that's what I do. Showdown asks, what inspired me to be a YouTuber? And it's not really a... a a simple thing to go through so I'm just gonna kind of explain it the best that I possibly can four years ago I had a full-time job working for a cable company some might know it as Comcast others might have a different name for that <laughs> I worked for them full-time and you know I knew nothing about twitch or YouTube at the time I was happy at that job unfortunately I kind of ran started running into like a series of medical issues to where uh, I was very stressed out. The job was super stressful. You know, I was starting to get to the point where I couldn't handle it. And then, you know, otherwise I was still doing it. But the the one thing that really started becoming an issue for me was I was starting to get a lot of pain in my side. So I had that checked out by the doctor. They had determined that I had a bad gallbladder or a, mal a malfunctioning gallbladder. Uh, so it wasn't working the way that it needed to work. And the best option for me really to just to move on and to live a healthier life was just to get it removed. So that's what I did and through that process of healing uh, being bedridden for a while is when I kind of discovered the whole YouTube twitch scene so I know obviously YouTube existed much before that but I never thought of it as like a, a platform where I would get on and create because I don't think gaming videos were really that big at the, at the time they started really taking off later that year this was 2012 I believe later that year and then into 2013 is like when gaming on a platform like that really just started taking off so I discovered after that, I discovered Twitch. My friend Simon, he's one of my best friends that I've known for just a really long time, over 10 years, started streaming on there. And then I, I kind of got into it from there. That happening was almost like a blessing in disguise because that's when I discovered all this stuff. And I actually, like, I was always a gamer at heart, but this was a new way. This was a new platform and this was a new way to, uh, to discover that. Eventually, 
the transition just kind of happened. Like I didn't up and quit everything at Comcast. I don't know why I quoted that, but I was having some additional medical issues and I could not get time off from work to deal with that anymore. Unfortunately, things just kind of went to a close there. It was a really bad process. There was a lot of paperwork involved and essentially uh, I did find more work at the time. I, I started working at a warehouse for a bit. A as I was working, I, I just kept like getting more and more into it. And at some point I had opportunities to try and do this on a regular basis. So here I am. Vani asks, can you lick your elbow? And I cannot, I can't do it. I tried, you know, uh, eh. Uh, there, we're gonna, we're gonna call that a win. We're gonna call that a win. Miss Lasana asks, if you could only eat one cookie, which cookie would it be? Not counting chocolate chip. Well, how dare you do that to me? Oh my goodness. How am I gonna make it through this question now? Well, I do love chocolate chip cookies. They are by far my favorite and they're the easiest way to be my best friend, really. Just, they are. They are they're the best. But if I had to choose another one, there's a lot of good ones out there. So I like white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. I like uh, peanut butter cookies. I like iced oatmeal cookies. I like M&M cookies. Uh, there's many more, really. There's so many that I could sit here and list. I, I just like them. They're good. They're they're a nice quick dessert. I'm not saying they're they're healthy, but they're they're just they're convenient. Okay, okay. Curly Shadow asks, Do I have any siblings? How did I choose my screen name? And what was my first pet? And what was its name? Well, that's kind of three questions in one, so we'll, we'll knock those out. I do have one sibling, I have one sister, she's five years younger than me. To answer your second question, how did I choose my screen name? It's kind of a little bit of a deep story. If anybody is into any kind of, like, rock or metal music, first off, rock on. Second off, the inspiration for the name came because of a group called Pantera, and they had a lead guitarist named Daryl Abbott. Uh, his nickname was Dimebag, if anybody knows uh, anything about the history of them. A great band, they had great music. The screen name stems from an unfortunate accident that happened back in 2004 when they were doing a concert. Uh, I forget the location, but they were on stage. A gunman had entered the venue and fired at Dimebag Daryl Abbott. Unfortunately, he lost his life, and then the name is that. Uh, it was a rock star tragedy, and it was kind of like that just it hit me as a name at the time. I stuck with it, and I still stand by it today. I still appreciate the type of work, the type of music that that man was able to do. He was truly a king, a legend of guitar play. Really, there's nothing else to be said but good words about that man. And that's how I got my name. I mentioned this at Indie PopCon too, but that footage never quite made it out. But that is why I made the name that I did. Lastly, she asked, what was your first pet in its name? I believe we had a small dog named Bubbles when I was about two or three years old. Not entirely too sure, uh, obviously I don't remember a whole lot from when I was very young, but I believe that's the first pet we ever have. The first cat that I ever had, uh, I believe was a cat named Pumpkin, she was all grey and uh, she was really cute and fluffy and kitty and uh, yeah. Gail asks what is my favorite memory and it's really hard to, to sit here and pick a, a memory out of all the ones that I've had, but I definitely have appreciated a lot of the ones that I've made recently with a lot of the friends that I have met. Uh, of course, Bob and Mandy, the times that we've been able to hang out, uh, we've all hung out at PAX West or PAX Prime, whatever people are calling it now. I still don't know. I'm still going to call it probably PAX Prime, <laughs> but uh, just those memories and of course, Indie PopCon, and I'm sure we're going to make a lot of new memories coming up when we all head down to North Carolina. We're going to hang out with Bob for uh, New Year's, and that's going to be a lot of fun. I really can't wait for that. Other than that, I, I have a ton of memories I can remember. Growing up with a lot of my cousins and such were also gamers, so we all would always play games all the time, and it was a lot of fun, and we would have, like, pizza parties and stuff like that. Like, that kind of stuff, you, you kind of cherish. Like, at the time, it's like, oh, this is going to happen again and again and again, but now when you think back, you look back, everybody's kind of stemmed their own way. You know, some of them are no longer gamers, some of them no longer even talk to me, <laughs> but you still cherish those memories, and uh, still cherish those memories uh, even when you get older, so I, it's something I've always thought about. Got a question from Duct Tape. But ask what kind of movies do I like to watch other than The Walking Dead and hockey? What else do you watch TV show-wise? And uh, 
I like a lot of movies. I don't watch a lot of movies that come out in theaters nowadays because I'm just not one who ventures out to those all the time. I mean, I would love to do that more often, but Al Pacino is one of my favorite actors of all time. I, I love his work. I'm obsessed with his work, honestly. Scarface, Scent of a Woman, Sea of Love, Heat, 88 Minute, Carlito's Way. It's a super good one. All the Godfather stuff. I can go on and on and on. I just absolutely love his work. Other than movies, I would have to say some shows that I'm really into are Suits. Uh, it's a great show about lawyers who kind of like struggle internally and externally within the firm, trying to battle for positions, trying to take over other firms, trying to put people out of business, trying to save their own ass a lot of time. It's a really great dramatic show. I like another show called Ink Master, which is a show about uh, a bunch of tattoo artists kind of competing in a competition. And basically each week, uh, they're pitted against each other. Uh, the judges usually pick a challenge that they have to adhere to, like color saturation or line work or shading or anything like that. And if the, if the artists falter or don't quite hit the challenge or if their tattoo just flat out is bad, they get eliminated from the show, they're sent off. So it kind of narrows down to a finale where the artists are competing for a $100,000 prize. The feature in Ink Magazine in the title of Ink Master. Okay, I didn't quite sound like Dave Navarro, but it's a great show. You guys should check it out, especially if you appreciate good artwork. It's like the colors and everything. It's it's beautiful. And they have a couple other shows that stem from that also, so it's fun. I love it. Another show that I got into recently is Mr. Robot. That show came out last year. It's a great show about a young man who is very knowledgeable in the computer world, and he becomes this hacker. So basically, he's working for a big corporation, but then he gets tired of it. He wants to be able to set everyone free, and so he launches one of the biggest cyber attacks against his own company to try to bring them down. And I don't want to say too much more without really spoiling the show. There's a lot of drama involved. There's a lot of crazy things that happen in that show. I mean crazy, crazy. It's super good and like the way that they film it like the realistic scenes that they've shown in it not only with the hacking but like the side effects of it and all of that like it's super good i can't say enough good things about it and rami malik is just a fantastic actor i got to witness his work even before he started on mr robot he uh he was on the Until Dawn game and did a fantastic job there. And he's done a couple other things uh, as well. And then when I seen him on Mr. Robot, I just really, I've appreciated what he's done. It's been, it's been awesome. All right, Eric asks, of course, Eric would ask this. He asks, what's your most embarrassing fart moment? <laughs> and you know, I wasn't going to leave any question unanswered. So I'm answering all the ones that I got. Again, in the future, if we get like a million, obviously that's not going to be able to happen. But uh, to answer it honestly, you know, when you're first with that significant other of yours and it's like early on in the relationship and maybe you've had your first date and, you know, things are kind of progressing and then it just happens, right? That's usually super embarrassing and, you know, how else do you handle that situation? <laughs> so it's probably one of the most embarrassing moments. Uh, but as the relationship goes on, you, you kind of just get used to it. You go with, you go with it. When that first introduction to that kind of stuff it's always it's always an experience and I'm not talking just from my point of view you know when your you know significant other also has their first moment it's, it's something of course I've asked what got me into video games as a whole so I'm assuming they're asking like what video game really did it for me and I, I don't know if I really have one in particular but um, I really started off early in the video game generations. Uh, so we're talking pre-Nintendo here, pre-NES. Uh, so I've had a lot of experience with Atari, and television, ColecoVision. A lot of those games really got me into gaming in general. And then a couple years afterwards, uh, my dad had brought in a regular Nintendo Entertainment System and really from there just seeing him kind of be a gamer early on and ever since i i just i've loved it uh, some of my favorites really started happening when the uh snes came around so the mario kart and the mega mans and the final fantasies uh those were all games that really got me into gaming and then it just slowly progressed from there okay so at this point i have answered a question from everyone who has submitted them so now i'm going to go through some of the uh, additional questions that were asked by some people who already asked them so my main goal was to at least get everyone who asked the question get their questions done and now we're going to go into that category where 
Uh, some users have submitted additional questions, so I'm going to take the time to answer them because they're all still good, but I wanted to be fair about it, so let's just continue moving forward now with these additional questions. So Duct Tape asks, uh, her second question was, what do you like to do when you're not playing games for YouTube and Twitch? And honestly, when I'm not playing, I'm watching, I'm learning, I'm trying to figure out ways to, you know, grow my community, to stay interactive with you guys. I I've tried to launch ways to do that. I'm still working on some things behind the scenes. I can't announce anything, but there is there's always something in the works. There's always something that I'm trying to do to, to better myself, to better the community, and, and try to do new things and fun things for not only myself, but of course for you guys, because that's really what's important. Other than that, like, just the normal things, the normal daily adult life, running errands. Uh, I don't necessarily like to do those things, but uh, working out has been a thing that I do actually like to do. Uh, I've been really trying to, to move forward with that, and so far, some success, some success, but uh, yeah, really, like, th this is what I do, so most of my time is spent revolving ar around these platforms and just trying to um, be the best that I can be at it. Sammy's second question asks, how long does my average video take to record and edit? And that's a good question because it really depends on what is getting edited, what is getting recorded. Uh, for example, this particular video that I'm doing right now is probably going to take a while because I'm taking snippets of all your guys' questions as you've been seeing like on the bottom of the screen here. And uh, basically throwing all those in and then editing the, the individual questions and, and aligning them and everything that takes a significant amount of time compared to like a, a video game recording to where like as long as there's no major issues in the equipment i kind of know the direction that that video is going to go since i recorded it i can kind of make the edits from there so those usually don't take that long but if i had to give a number to it i would say roughly anywhere from i would say maybe about 15 minutes to about an hour for the gaming stuff uh maybe a little bit longer for the stuff that i'm doing here with like the q and a's and the vlog and stuff michelle's second question is a normal question and says i know you're a positive of human but what even made you willing to drop almost everything and build this community well uh, i kind of went over what exactly happened and in a question that was asked initially i believe by showdown like what kind of inspired me to be a youtuber but uh, a lot of it was sheer luck to be honest if you can word it that way obviously i had to go through some medical things in order for me to actually experience what the whole point of YouTube and Twitch was, and then the power behind those communities, and the power behind you know doing something that you love, something you enjoy. So it, it's been a it's been a kind of different joyride, I guess, going through this. But a after the transition from that type of work to what I'm doing now, I was uh, afforded opportunities really to try and make a run with it. And now that I'm in a position where I can do this on my own time i'm super thankful for that the opportunities that i've been afforded to be able to do this have been fantastic with those opportunities i've also been able to kind of run with this on my own also so i wouldn't say i dropped everything but uh, the opportunity definitely presented itself and i've never looked back this has been just a lot of fun for me and i'm hoping to keep that momentum going same as third question asked do i ever sleep and the, the solid answer to that is not really not as much as I would like. I mean, I, I do get a decent amount of sleep every night, but it, I guess it appears that maybe I'm not. I, I am trying to work as much as humanly possible when I'm awake, so I'm trying to... I do edit for Bob. I also have my own stuff to edit, and I'm also working on a Minecraft server, trying to build all those platforms to fullest potential that I can. When I'm not recording or not streaming and you're not seeing anything, I'm doing a ton of behind-the-scenes stuff just to try to make things look better. And thanks to Sammy herself, uh, I've gotten a lot of new artwork for the channel that I commissioned from her. So a uh, quick shout out, you guys should check her out. Um, the, the tag is right there on the screen. Uh, give her some work because you will be happy, you will be satisfied. She works with you every step of the way and I can't say enough good things about her. So check out her social media. Send her, send her a request. Uh, ask her to do something for you. She's a very reasonable person. Monty's second question says, better question, do you want to build a snowman? And the answer is yes but who will i build it with will it be you but well, sure as hell ain't gonna be in pittsburgh because we uh we have 50 degree weather right now which is kind of disappointing the one time a year you want the snow and it's not here now i know there's a lot of other places out there but like well we don't even get snow we don't even get cold weather it's nine degrees but i live in a place that should be getting it and we're not so i am less sad i don't know why i said it like that but uh yeah, it's awful. So Michelle asks another question that says, who do you believe really killed Kennedy? Now, I don't know if you met Kenny from South Park or if you legit met Kennedy, the former president who was assassinated. The only thing I know and the only thing I've ever read about is Lee Harvey Oswald being the one who was responsible for that. I, I, I'm not much of a historian. I don't look into that stuff too much. So 
that's the answer I have. That's the answer I'm sticking with. I know that there was like some debates on, you know, who really did or did not do that. Maybe the truth will never be known. I don't know, but I'm just sticking with what has really been the answer for like the last 50 years. Sammy asked, what are my top three favorite cookies? Asking for a friend, huh? Well, chocolate chip obviously is going to be my number one favorite. Number two would have to be maybe... M&M, even though that's kind of almost the same thing except for the candy shell. I do like, there's so many that I like. I like peanut butter cookies. I like sugar cookies to an extent. If I have to round off the top three, uh, white chocolate macadamia nut would be number two. Iced oatmeal, number three. There you go. Secrets out. Fonny's third and final question says, can there be magic cookies on the server? This is a very cookie themed video and I'm super happy about that. The answer is maybe. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but maybe there's a plugin out there that does that. I don't know. If there is, and it's fun, and it functions, and it does something that can benefit everybody, then yes, we will find a way to get that on there. And Sammy sent this question to me this morning. What are my top five favorite Christmas gifts you've gotten so far? And really, I uh, it's hard to pick and choose that, but if I have to go through the list uh, over all the years of all the things that I've gotten... I think the ones that I was most excited for as a kid was the Nintendo 64. Now, I didn't quite go as nuts as the Nintendo 64 kid or guy. Or I know he was super stoked, but I got pretty excited also. That was my my first major gift, like, that really I committed a lot of time to using. Number two is going to sound cheesy, but I definitely appreciate when... Uh, family gets me something that I can use, so it doesn't have to be anything expensive. Uh, for example, when like four of my aunts all get me the same thing, like a bunch of uh, like body wash, shampoo, and stuff like that, and that lasts so long, uh, it's super awesome. Like I don't have to worry about buying that stuff for the whole year. So usually. Uh, that's what ends up happening, so I always appreciate that. Uh, number three, sweaters, sweatshirts, and stuff that are in good taste. Uh, and what I mean by that is stuff that I obviously will wear. Uh, my family's pretty good with knowing what I'll wear. Uh, I get the occasional, like, thing that, you know, <laughs> I don't end up wearing, but, you know, I'm not saying names or not saying what. Uh, I always enjoy, like, just something comfortable uh number four i would have to say uh tech gear uh i've gotten some cool stuff over the years been gifted a tablet i have been gifted some really cool computer gear and i don't know if it counts if i buy it for myself but you know it was a christmas gift so you know one year i bought a uh, a keyboard a musical keyboard i would actually like to get back into trying to really learn the process of playing that because i think that would be a cool thing that i could probably do somewhere i don't know if youtube or twitch would allow that but uh, maybe going along a musical journey or something like that. I was going a guitar once when I was little as well. It was like one of those beginner guitars. I still have it, I believe, but it's not in good shape. And I think all the strings are kind of broken. <laughs> but like music's always been a huge part of my life. So anytime I got a musical gift, it's been super awesome. Uh, number five, I would have to say gift cards. They're always a good option because, you know, you can use them for whatever you want unless they're a specific gift card, like, say, like a Starbucks or something, which I also appreciate because I love that place. Okay, I love that place. It's the best. They have the best coffee. I know it's debatable, but they're the best. I always appreciate a good gift card. I know a lot of people are like, well, they didn't really put a lot of thought into that, but it's not always about that, really. Like, it's good that people put thought into it, but it's also good, you know, when you have something that you can use, and that's what I kind of stress in, in the other top things that I've mentioned. I, I appreciate a good gift card, and I know there's not a number six, but I think this has to be said, and this necessarily doesn't mean this is in the number six spot, but just time. Time is the best gift. Time spent with friends, time spent with family. Can't really say enough about that. So that's it, guys. That's all the questions I've received. Thank you guys so much for taking part in that. Uh, if you do want to see another one of these videos, please leave a comment down below. I would love to do another one of these. At this time, I'm not asking for additional questions in the comments. Uh, I'll, I'll try to figure out a way to do that. I might just keep using this hashtag because it looks like I started it, so I own it. Well, I, I know that's not how that works. I don't technically own it, but I started it, so it's, it's, it's mine. Thank you guys again. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you guys all have a great holiday season. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I love you all. Rock on, and I'll see you later.